So we will record a you guys reading a passage that has been given to you through Google Docs uh, according to an order that has been decided. Uh, so basically we, we will start with Chris Lewis MP. I think it's up to them in the 21st century if they wish to step back from their royal duties. I think given what it has done to them, given the pressure and the stress, if you've ever been in the public eye and you've been in the eye of a media storm, our multiple media storm, let's not forget Prince Harry's mother has was harassed severely Princess Diana by the media. He has seen this before as had a massive impact on his life and now it's happening to his wife. I think he has every right and she has every right to step back from the public life and do as they see fit. And I also think as well, look, this sheer Meghan Markle is one of the most privileged people in this country. And yet look what our media is doing to her and Prince, Prince Harry. It is completely unacceptable. And I think that they have every right to make the decision that they have. <clears throat> and do you think it's just, it's just the media that is making them do this? We must look through through their website today and they explain their their reasoning and in in some detail they want to live a different kind of life as well yes they do but i think we have to take into account that this probably wouldn't happen and it is speculation on my part but this probably wouldn't have happened if there hadn't been this such such negative coverage from the british media I mean, this is the same British media that is meant to be the fourth estate, meant to hold power and the public to account. It's meant to be fair. It's meant to be balanced. It's anything but. And I think what you can see in the way that she has been treated as a member of the royal family is that little short uh, of, of a disgrace as far as I'm concerned. And I think she has every right and Prince Harry have every right to do what they've done. As for the issue of warning Her Majesty about this, well, I personally feel that's a, that's, a, that's a family matter between them. I understand that Her Majesty may be upset about that, but ultimately that's a family matter and I don't think I would want to delve into that. Max. I agree it was about uh, of what I said. I think that Meghan Markle and Prince Harry deserve tremendous sympathy because it is hell being royal. It is incredibly difficult being royal. I don't buy the view that it's all racist if one remember you mentioned Diana. I was a newspaper editor at the time that Diana was in the eye of the storm and an awful lot of royals have a very bad time. You can argue from the media without the issue of race being brought into it. But I also feel very sorry for the queen and all this, that here is she in her 90s facing more of this, of this family storms. And I think one of the problems that perhaps because she has lived at such a great age, nobody's got to grips with the issue of what is the royal family supposed to be and the idea. I think Prince Charles is that right to talk about a slim down royal family in which the state is not expected. Yes, to pay 2.4 million for Prince Harry. His house in which there is a clear and Standing of what is and is not expected to bless the royals, and we are all arguing, arguing all the time. I think they are the victims of this in some degree because nobody has told that makes basically just what is and is not expected on them. So they deserve sympathy. Prince Charles, William, and the Queen deserve sympathy and all this. But I hope that they'll keep talking what one does. Hope is there's obviously a hell of a round going on in that family. And the worst thing that could happen is if up they end up on nuns because they got to keep talking. They got to see a way through this and one hopes it will be a happy one. Not only for Meghan and Prince Harry, but also for the Queen and the future of the monarchy which some of us care passionately about. Uh, now, Carlis, you can read, you can continue. <clears throat> yes, they're talking about 
living financially independently. Let me just take another question here at the front of you. Had your hand up with the on with the sweater. Yes. So what do they say exactly? They said they will work, become financially independent. I mean, who pays for the royals? Uh, it's really toast their security something that comes under your ages, Brandon. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> so you, so you, are you happy if they step back from their role as senior major royal family? Are you going to keep paying for the security? Well, I'm sure you won't be. Suppose I'm not going to be able to comment on how we deal with security issues for any protective person, whether they are maybe royal family or otherwise protected. But surely you can tell us whether or not you'd be happy to keep funding it. Uh, no, we all, uh, all protection for our family always is done on a risk assess based, is done independently. It does come within my remit, but I think it will be, I'm afraid it just will be inappropriate for me to comment on how we arrange and what we do for security for protective people. But look what I will say, and this is where there's an element of agreement between Clive and Max, and certainly myself will be that I grieve the point Clive point out in the beginning, which is I think that Harry and Megan and the royal family generally do amazing work for this country and particularly for charitable and good causes as well as well as we should be you know we're very lucky i'm very proud to be in a country we've got royal family like that but ultimately i think max's point is is also right around to the fact that this is also a matter for the royal family and i and i hope we end up in a position where the whole where the whole family get a result that's good for them and also good for the country because one of the things we have seen throughout the history of that country is that the royal family has evolved over the centuries and over the generations to reflect the country as it as it is at that given time i'm sure we'll continue to see that but obviously this is a matter for the royal family and you can see a situation where harry and megan are living independently but are they still part of the royal family can you see that I mean, some would see that as a contradiction in terms, can you see that working? Well, as I said, we're waiting to see exactly what the royal family want to do and what they, where they want to go with this. I think, but I think it'll be difficult to prejudge what they might do. <laughs> but we should also be clear that they are part of all things, not just funding through the public purse. You know, family all says, funding through the family itself from their own interests. <laughs> And I saw you shaking your head in some frustration. Uh, let me start with the position of the success is, I think it depends whether their aim is still to be in the royal family or not. I mean, they say that they don't want to be in senior royals, but that's a somewhat different question. Well, they say they want to continue, continue to collaborate with the Queen. Right. And, and you support, you know, through charity? I think, I think, that's the slight problem that you have, a model of the royal family, and I do think a slim down royal family is where we need to head. <clears throat> I think Prince Charles was right about that, that is now happening by uh, necessity, not by choice. But the question is that when it's the role of those who, if you like, or in the outer core, they are an attractive couple that have brought the breath of fresh air to the royal family. I interviewed Meghan Markle along with a panel of other people last year. I found very, very engaging professional to work with. I like her focus on subjects like girl education worldwide. I like the fact that she had an international dynamic to what she brought to it. But that it, you can do a lot of that from a different platform. If you want to stay somehow connect to the royal family being a semi-royal with a bit of time at Fortmer Cottage and a lot of it in North America is going to be very difficult to pull off. It's going to need to be a very strategic match has, thing, has Ling said. I think quite rightly, it's going to have to be done by agreement. It can't be done by an exchange of hostile communication as we had in the last day or so.
So something's gone bad wrongly. Gone badly <laughs> Gone badly wrong. It may be serviceable, but it does need thinking to the reason. I disagree with Clive. It's look, I mean, we talk about the media and poor coverage. Yes, it might must be very bruising to get coverage you don't like. Sometimes that even happened to the politician too. Just very quickly, Max, what I was about to say, if you look like I think most coverage, including broadcaster, is very, very positive in the UK. We often don't report a lot of things that people say when they don't like the lawyers. So I think that you have to be calibrate it and they have to roll with that if they want to still be connected to the firm. Sure, this is talking about money that one issue that is going to face if they do step down is that they are going to find a lot of people, especially in North America, who want to keep the money. But they are absolutely the worst sort of people who probably most of them they should not be taking money from on this issue. You mean tears, a commercial endorsement, that kind of thing? Well, they are whether it's whether it's lending them yet, whether it's it's all the people who are most eager to hang around royals, are uh, almost so, it's so a factor, factor the people who the royals should let them hang around and how they overcome that problem is going to be very difficult for. We have one thing that has me this idea of growing financial independence. We've seen that before. I'm thinking of the Count Countess of Wessex, for example, here. Civil production company, the PR company. And, and in the end, the Queen ended up giving them money so they wouldn't be doing that any longer. Can you see that working? So I think you can see it working. I think it just, you know, question of imagination, a question of will in it. At the end of the day, for me, you know, a lot of sympathy for Harry and Meghan. I think they've been really given a really rough ride. You have just to look at some of the coverage over, you know, over the overnight around their decision, which has been really wild and exotic, excessive, and to see what that actually is being. Actually, unfair. I think it's part of it because Meghan doesn't conform to what people. Some people expect a royal should look like. She at that, and so she's thinking a really tough time. I think it's wrong, and I think it's really sad. And so, you know, I think there is a young family, delivery, like a baby that's pretty tough. And it's all right, they're under huge amount of pressure. They've been really honest about, you know, how unhappy they are about a mental health issue that they are struggling with. And I say, you know, they kind of break and they decided we want to change things. We want to focus on ourselves and our kids. And I think they are completely right and said fair to play that. I do think it shines a spotlight yet again on the royal family, on the monarchy. And you know, I think that you know the monarchy, a part of our culture, our religion, our history. But it needs to be formed and it need to be brought and in back to, to the 21st century. And for me, that means more of constitutional reform so that we are no longer a nation or subject, but we are a nation of citizen. So the fact that it needs to be scaled down so that they are less royal and the fact we have to, we have, we have this very privilege where wealthy family that should be financially, financially independent but also actually well that they, they are accumulated three centuries that they have inherited they should be giving it back some of it back to the public because in the end it belongs to us there is there is uh so basically that's all Okay, let's come down. <laughs>